Hi guys, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a follower, welcome back. This is a quick, short update, I'm trying to discourage anybody from replicating this at this stage. As you can see, I have the spring here, spring loaded, and you see I have a check here. So when this moves over to a certain point, it stops. So this way, it stops here, can't go any further, so it remains flush. And then it goes to here, and then it can't it can't go any further, as you can see. Okay. Now, even though I have the spring loaded, which helps immensely, the problem is why this won't work properly. I'm not saying it won't work at all, but I'm not going to continue chasing this. Time is too valuable. So I'll, I'll explain to you where this where we're going to go with this. But I want to show you here why not to chase this. What happens is, is that when we get to the last magnet here, it kicks this out, but it uses the energy from this wheel to kick this out. Okay, see how it kicks it out? So let me just start spinning the wheel and watch what happens. Each time it kicks it out, it loses speed. That part works beautifully. One more time, as you can see, it's losing speed. But see, I got that, that uh, armature magnet swinging just fine. I mean, not armature magnet, I mean stator magnet. But this is not going to work. Don't waste your time with this. The only way this is worth your time is if you're going to do this, you're going to take and put a rod on this so it follows the wheel like this. And as this rod goes back and forth, it will take this and it'll push this back accordingly where it needs to be. Because the problem here that is truly why this is a dead end, unless you make more modifications, it's quite simple. As it gets to the last magnet, the last magnet is uh, giving up too much energy because this is still down. This, at this point, needs to be already up all the way. See how it wants to go? But if it's down like this, it doesn't want to go. See? So we bring this back. Now the wheel won't start turning again. So we have to time this. So this starts retracting before the last magnet goes through. Bring it back. As you can see, start retracting it again. Bring it back. And retracting it. You can actually start retracting this just a little bit in advance. Which is probably what's going to have to happen. So, that's, that's where we stand for this right now. I mean, this is all clever, good and well, but just because it looks cool doesn't mean it's going to work. So, this is going to have to be the magic bullet to, to, to take this rod and push this thing back and forth in time with the wheel. And we may not still be home free because depending on how much torque we use up from the wheel may determine whether this does or doesn't work. Now, because this swings... I believe this is going to take up a lot of energy or torque from the wheel. So it, that this here, if Lightseeker happens to be watching, this, this swivel stator mount that you will eventually be printing out, hopefully. Um, and I know there's another gentleman here who stepped up to the plate as well. Uh, he's waiting for some drawings from me, and I apologize. I just haven't gotten to it. I'm waiting for an email from him. I haven't checked, though, in the last 24 hours. But... If we can get this magnet pulled back where it's in a swivel point, it's going to take up a lot less torque. And that much I do know to be absolute fact. So the less torque we need to get this running, the better. And then at some point, if this works, I, I believe it might. There's a pretty good chance it will. But there's always unknowns. So if this indeed does work and this starts limping along, I mean, that's all it needs. If it just moves along a little bit, that's all that matters. And then from this point forward, we can tweak it and redesign it and tweak it until we start getting some real torque out of this, which means multiple stators all the way around. Now, another way here, I've come up with an idea to um, manipulate multiple stators is that you can only have one rod. You can't have two rods, three rods on here. It's not going to work. So how would you do multiple stators all the way around? Well, you would do it this way. Let me spin this. Let me turn. 
Yeah, let me zoom in here. See how it raises? Now that's too steep. But that was a little lower down, squished down so it wasn't so steep. See, that's up way too high. But what could happen here that can act as an actuator and as it faced toward each stator, it would have a mechanism where when it run into this, it would push it up and that action would then come out to here and cause this to retract back away. So it would be a repeating process. So as this started to face each given stator position around the wheel, this in turn could kick it out. So uh, it's a very valid idea actually, but how much friction is gonna be involved in this? What will it take to reduce the friction to, to nominal friction? Um, our ball bearings going to be needed, little teeny weeny wheels. I mean, what's going to be needed here to capitalize on this to make this work? But this is a very valid idea because how else are you going to make multiple stators go off? Just like pistons to a car. These are our pistons, if you will, that makes this engine run. If, and I emphasize if, we can get this running. Now, I just did that by hand. So I just moved this by hand to get that going. So... So what we're gonna need here, we're gonna to need to, to borrow some of the torque from this wheel. Now, some of you are saying you can't get some for nothing. I don't know here, like somebody said, you know, a few others, laws are meant to be broken. We don't understand everything when it comes to physics. <clears throat> we just don't. I believe we truly have some holes in our physics. Uh, one of them is like, okay, we now know, the, well, we, you and I, most of us know, have known for years that UFOs are very, very real and they hover and then they take off at incredible speeds from zero to maybe four, five, six hundred miles an hour and do it instantaneously. So, and, and they survive it just fine. So there are things that we just don't understand, obviously. So, and also, I truly believe I have defeated Murphy's, I mean, not Murphy, I keep saying Murphy, I'm so sorry, Newton's third law of motion, and uh, which says for every action is equal and opposite reaction, which is true here, because the way this is set up here, if I hold this down here like this, Newton's third law of motion kicks into gear. See? So, but the whole point behind the stator, which we will get back to that, I promise you, is that the stators I've designed are stronger on one side and weaker on the other side, actually. The way I do it is stronger on this side and weaker on this side. And we might be able to introduce some shielding in here. Uh, I don't know if you've all ever noticed, but on some of these here, where there's a bunch of these round magnets recessed into a plastic wheel, they actually have shielding exactly one half of the way around. And the, and the shielding is almost all the way up to the edge. So they're shielding one half of every single magnet. I don't know if any of you all have ever paid any attention to that, but I certainly have. All right, well, let me close out here. Um, that's it. So don't chase this unless you think you know something that I've overlooked that why you think this might actually work. It might look cool, but that's about it. It's not going to work until we get a rod pushing this back and forth manually. What will happen is that when the rod is on the back side, it will be all the way out like this. And then as the back side starts to swing around, this will swing around in time before the lead magnet returns. Then before the last magnet leaves, this will have completely swung out of the way. So that's my plan. Alrighty. Thank you guys for hanging in there again. Uh, thank you for taking the time to check out my video because time is something that you and I, all of us, we can never get back. So I truly do kindly appreciate it. And also your financial support that some of you are starting to donate. <clears throat> Excuse me. I truly appreciate your all's financial support that you're all starting to donate directly into my PayPal rather than going through GoFundMe. Because GoFundMe gets a little bit of the money. Alrighty, that's it. Thank you kindly. Take care.